Hi, you guys. Happy Thursday. Woo! We've almost made it to the end of the week. Um, we will continue to do what we have um, and cor make corrections. I will give some things. Here's the deal. Since I'm not um, able to put answers in because that was really bothering people, it's going to take me a lot longer to get um, grading done. And so I may not have your grades done by Thursday. So if that's the case, if I can't get them done by Friday morning, I will give you um, a fun assignment to work on on Friday. Um, and if you feel like you were worried about an assignment that you wanted to go back and do corrections for just for that week, you can do that. Um, but again, it, that's the that's a bummer because I have to kind of build my things twice so first I have to go in and, and build the forms and fill all that out and then you guys take it and then I have to go back and rebuild it and put all the answers in um, and then even though I check them all because um, sometimes for instance today I, I did one I had the check boxes and um, somebody got um, two of them right out of four so it gave them zero points. Well, I give you two points. So I go through and I add those two points in. But it's so much easier for me to look at the correct answers and do that. Um, so, But it's much more time consuming for me to be able to have to do it twice. So I probably won't um, be able to get all of your things corrected for you by Thursday night. So that kind of takes away that Friday a little bit and we'll just kind of move on and do something else for that day. So there we go. Um, what do I want to say? I guess we'll start with our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we pray together, teach me, God, to add love and mercy towards others, to subtract sin and anxiety from my life, to multiply the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and to divide our differences as I share with others acts of mercy today. Let's add in our petitions and prayers that we have for others and for ourselves. You pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of you who have lost people that you love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All right, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, there's so many sirens out tonight. I do not know why. Um, okay, so <clears throat> this is just one step closer to what you're going to be doing in... Um, so, first of all, I have to show you this. It kind of moves. That's the bad part. But my daughters for uh, Mother's Day got me this, like, table-y thing that you can put your computer on to do this. Last, before, I had this lovely, reliable thing, the music stand, and then I had a bungee cord, so I put my computer on there and bungee corded in, and these little things held it in. I don't know. It was good. However, I did drop my computer once. That was bad. Um, and, I don't know. It was always a little iffy, right? I don't want to be bungee cording your computer into something every day, a lot of times a day. So anyway, all right, here we go. So we are still doing function tables. You know how to do them now. Um, I'm going to do two examples for you. The difference today is that you're going to be building your own. Okay, now just a, a, a word to the wise. I have noticed um, over this past week with all the classes that people, number one, are not taking notes. Number two, you are losing papers and that makes it very hard on you. So you need to label, like this is page, what page are we doing today? Page 408. So when you do your page, you know, I would probably put it on, um, I'd probably do it in a notebook so I didn't lose it even. Um, so, you know, page 408, number one, and then do your stuff so that you can go back, um, enter all your answers on that page. And then if this happened to um, a number of people, but um, 
I think it happened to um, Savannah this time. It happened to Wyatt yesterday. Um, they had entered something and had all the answers. They entered it and whatever your internet glitched or, you know, something happened and um, it didn't work. If you don't have that paper, it's so hard to go back and do it. But if you have your paper, you can just look at it, type in your answers and you're good. So please heed that. I'm not saying this to make you do more work. I'm actually saving it, saying it to save you work. All right. So. We're going to make a pact right now. Uh, they start us off with negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1 when you are doing numbers 9 through 14. And then when it comes to 15 to 20, you can do anything. I'm going to say let's all do negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. Those are the four numbers that we're going to do. I'm not going to make you do five. We're just going to do four numbers for each one. Okay? So... There's your rule, right? You're going to make a box and it's going to say X and Y. You're going to put all of your numbers in negative two, negative one. These are all your domain or input zero, one. So it's just four things for each box. Now we're going to do our problems and figure out what they are. So for X, I'm going to put in negative two. So I'm thinking four times negative two plus one. Always do, remember when I have four and X next to each other, that means four times X. So it's like having a, a dot in there, but we don't put the dot. When we have variables, we just set it right next to each other. So four times negative two, the other way you could do that is put a parentheses around it. Four times negative two is negative eight. And then negative 8 plus 1, different signs, subtract negative 7. So I'll write negative 7 in this. This is what your paper is going to look like, okay? Um, all right, then negative 1. So let's try. Negative, so I've got 4 times negative 1 and then plus 1. I'm using my function rule. That's net 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And negative 4 plus 1 gives me negative 3. 0. I told you yesterday. Love zeros. 0 times 4 is 0. So 0 plus 1 is 1. And then I'll put 1 in here. Well, 4 times 1 is 4. Um, so that'll be 4 plus 1, which is 5. And I have finished that one. So... As you continue to do this, you're going to see that um, it gets easier and easier. All right. Questions about that? Hopefully not. Um, I'm going to leave this one up. So um, you are going to give um, the range. Okay. So when you give this answer, um, you're going to write negative 7, negative 3, 1, and 5. That is your range, right? All your y's. Negative 7, negative 3, 1, 5. They're separated by a comma, and they're put in a set sign. This is the range. All right. Um, let's do this one. <coughs> X and y. I'm going to use the same domain every time. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. Same domain every time. Um, even when it says you can use anything, let's all agree we're just going to use the easier, easier ones here. All right, let's try it. So I'm going to put, I think that was negative 2.5x minus 3. So I'm going to put 2 in here. So I've got negative 2.5 times 2, and then I'll subtract 3. Well, 2 times 2.5 is 5, so that's negative 5, and then minus 3. Those are both negative numbers, negative 5 and negative 3. That gives me negative 8. Okay, I'm going to put negative 1 in for x. So I have negative 2.5 times negative 1 minus 3. Negative times negative is... Oh, 
man, that was not two. See, I already made a mistake, but that's okay. We'll go back. Uh, that was not two, that was negative two. So that is, what is negative times negative? Positive five. What's five minus three? Two. I didn't notice that until I went here and that was a negative and then I thought, huh, I thought that was a negative two. So if that happens to you, just go back and correct it. Negative times negative is positive. 2.5 times one is 2.5 minus three. Well, what's three? Now, you cannot set this up like this, you guys. It doesn't work. You have to put the one that's further away from zero on the top. So 3.0 and 2.5, so I'm gonna subtract them. Hopefully, you might not even have to do that, you just know it's 0.5. Now I'm gonna look, this is positive, this is negative. My answer is gonna be negative, because negative three is further away from zero. Right, put zero in here, love it, zero, that goes away, the answer is negative three. And then one times negative 2.5 is negative 2.5 minus three. Now they're both negatives and I'm gonna get negative 5.5. I'm going to add them because they're the same signs. All right, hopefully that made sense to you. Um, I do, there will be some that you, there's one that, um, that is going to be a fraction. So I just want to um, address that now. What if I have one third X plus one? Let's look and see what I would do. So I'm going to do one third times, because that means times, and I'll put in x, times negative two. Now, I'm gonna have to write negative two over one, right? So I multiply those first, and then I'm gonna add. You have to look and see what you're doing each time. One times negative two is negative two. Three times one is three. So now I have negative two thirds plus one. In order to make this into a fraction, what is one in thirds? Three thirds, right? So now I've got negative two thirds and three thirds, different signs subtract, three minus two is one third. So my answer is one third. Again, I, I don't like doing this, but when you enter it, you're gonna have to do one slash three. So if I did negative one, so I've got one third times negative one over one, it's gonna give me negative one third plus one plus three thirds. Well, three thirds minus one third is two thirds. Zero, love you. The answer is one, because zero times that is zero, goes away, plus one is one. And then one times one third, well, that's one third, plus one, so that's three thirds. What's three thirds plus one third? Four thirds. Now I've got to change that into a mixed number, don't I? So if three goes into four once with one left over. My answer is one and one third. All right, so it's not that bad to work with fractions. You're only gonna have, oh, actually I think you have two. Sorry, <laughs> there's only two, there's the last two, okay? So you're gonna be building your own tables and then when you do your answers, you're gonna do two thirds, one, one and one third. So I'm just gonna ask you to list what these are. However, you have to build your tables. Well, Mrs. Cook, I can just do it in my head. I'm not building a table. Okay, well, when it doesn't work and you have to go back and redo them all, that's a real bummer for you, number one. Um, number two, when we are doing much more difficult things and you can't do it in your head, we actually have a function table that's really long and the middle part 
um, we actually do our work in, and then we have that why. Um, I'm trying to get you ready for that, right? So we're doing it a little bit of, at a time. Part of that getting ready for it is learning how to do it correctly. So I want to see a table for each one of these, okay? Um, no, you're not going to turn the tables in. Um, you are going to be turning this in. Although I may do tables. I don't know. I can't remember. If I already did it, good on me. If I didn't, then <laughs> I'll have you just fill it in. I think I just put brackets and you're going to fill it in. So we'll see. All right. I hope you have a good night. Bye.